Hello everybody. My name is Jose Ramon Chang and I'm a PhD candidate at National Chen Kong University. Today I want to talk to you about scheme feature point tracking using deep feature encodings. Traditional computer vision methods are notorious for failing when the conditions are less than ideal. Deep learning has already started replacing these rule-based methods for the majority of computer vision tasks. This is more apparent when tracking small skin features which are typically considered not good features to track. My algorithm, Deep Feature Encodings, has proven to be more robust than these other traditional state-of-the-art computer vision methods. I believe that it represents a step closer to remote hardware estimation and quantification of motor function for Parkinson's disease patients. Let me share with you a little bit more about that. So the topic of this presentation is scheme feature point tracking using deep feature encodings. This has been done in collaboration with my advisor, Dr. Turbion Norling. So let's start. We typically like to explain our projects using this why, what, how figure. In this case, the why is because we want to do remote hardware estimation and quantification of motor function of Parkinson's disease patients through video data alone. We do that through analyzing the trajectories of different features that we match frame to frame. Feature matching is when we select a reference feature, which could be anywhere on the frame, and we compare it to other features in a second image to find the closest match. We aim to use the power of deep learning to learn better features that allow us to track them with more accuracy and precision. Quantification of the motor function of Parkinson's disease patients is typically done through the Movement Disorder Society Unified Parkinson's Disease Rating Scale. In here, a doctor scores the motor function of patients using an integer based scale that ranges from 0 to 4. We want to replace this with a more objective and fine approach using deep learning to analyze the videos of the motor test. For the remote hardware estimation, every year there are several babies at the neonatal unit at the National Chen Kong University Hospital that die due to complications of sensors that damage their skin when they are removed. Now, if the hardware estimation was done remotely, many of their lives can be saved, or at the very least, the quality of their care could be significantly improved. So, is it really possible to quantify these measures through video alone? Well, here we have a video of my advisor, Dr. Nordling, with the motion of several points in his face being enhanced by these blue arrows. Please note that even though that he is talking, we can still estimate his photophotometry signal using video-based methods and estimate his heart rate by counting the number of peaks on this photophotometry signal. This means that even though the signal is invisible for the naked human eye, using computer vision techniques, we can see and analyze it. So. If feature tracking is iterative feature matching, then what actually constitutes a feature? Well, a feature is a salient part of an object. Here, the object is my face, and the feature is this small on my face. Even though I rotate, zoom out, or zoom in the camera, we can see that the feature is still visible and therefore we should be able to locate it in every frame. This is different from other typical tasks in computer vision, like object recognition and object localization. For example, in object recognition, given an image with an object, we want to know what object is there and with what degree of confidence. An image localization algorithm 
outputs the object, but in addition, it outputs a bounding box that describes the size and location of that object in the image. Feature matching locates the same point on two images where the second image is a transformed version of the first. We did investigate other state-of-the-art methods for feature tracking, but realized that none of them work well for our applications. Lucas Canade proved to be the most promising one, but it failed as it started tracking a wrong feature and its error just diverged. We can see how at the beginning of this video, Lucas Canade remained on the reference feature, which is the nose, but eventually started tracking the wrong feature and ended up at the side of my face. So how exactly are we using deep learning to push the limits of these feature tracking algorithms? Well, here we have the diagram of an autoencoder network. We use this autoencoder to learn better features to track. Here, an encoder network compresses an input image into a lower dimensional space, and a decoder network uses that representation to reconstruct the image. This way, we can effectively teach the network to learn the most salient features of our data in an unsupervised manner. But why is this important? Well, this is relevant for us because by far the most popular learning strategy is supervised learning. Here, the data is composed of a sample and a label. A model takes that sample to, to make a prediction, which is then compared to the ground truth to calculate an error. Backpropagation is then used to calculate the gradients of the error with respect to the model parameters and an optimization method, like for example gradient descent, is used to make corrections on the model parameters based on those gradients. This is typically how deep neural networks are taught to learn good mappings between inputs and outputs. However, collecting and evaluating the quality of labels is typically the most strenuous part in a data collection pipeline. So if we are able to leverage our unsupervised learning strategy, we would not need any labels. So how exactly do we use deep feature encodings to make predictions on the locations of these features? Well, Let's take our first video, and in this video we take the first frame, we select a reference feature like the nose, then we pass this nose through the encoder subnetwork to get a compressed representation. This compressed representation is our reference representation. Then for the next image, we get all the different features at all possible points, pass them through the same encoder network, and then compare the representations to find the best match. Once we do this, we can move on and repeat the same process on all the subsequent frames of the video. Now, when we compare deep feature encodings with all the other methods, we can see that our method is the only one to remain on the nose while all the others fail. Also, during our experiments, we proved that our method is the most precise under a variety of situations. And when talking about feature tracking algorithms, precision is a key characteristic because we, as we have demonstrated, once the algorithm starts tracking the wrong point, the error is just likely to diverge because the algorithm is not likely to correct itself. Finally, I would just like to mention that we have published this work on ArcSieve and have submitted it to the International Journal of Computer Vision. And you're more than welcome to check out the technical presentation at the fourth online computer vision and artificial intelligence workshop hosted by our lab. Thank you for your attention and I hope that you liked it.